Welcome back to Pink's All Out. Today we have a very special segment. Contestants are challenged to build a mousetrap powered race car built for distance. You may be wondering, what is a mousetrap race car? Well, it is a vehicle that is powered by the energy of a mousetrap. The snapper arm of the mousetrap is typically extended and attached to a long string, which is wrapped around an axle and used to, to, and used to start to get the car in motion. Mousetrap race cars vary in size, shape, and form, but which design will win? Let's go to our first contestants, Marissa and Becky, to see their winning design. We call our car the Friction Free Ferrari. We chose this name because the secret to gaining distance for a challenge like this is to have the least friction available in your design. Friction is when two objects surfaces area touch and rub against each other, creating heat, heat, which loses energy, making the car less efficient. It is also the force that resists the movement of objects, either sliding or rolling. It is always directed to the opposite of the desired motion. It is caused when any two surfaces come in contact with each other. Even the smoothest of surfaces are rough under a microscope since they all have peaks and valleys which cause friction. There are two types of friction, dynamic and static. There are also two types of dynamic friction which are sliding and, sliding and rolling friction. Dynamic friction is in motion when, while static friction is at rest. Static friction is the strongest type since the surfaces that are in contact are so deeply nestled into each other's peaks and valleys that it is hard to come out. There are also stronger electromagnetic forces and bonds when objects are at rest. Sliding friction is the second strongest since when surfaces are in motion, they don't have enough time to create strong bonds and fit into each other's peaks and valleys. Rolling friction is the weakest type since resistive forces are acting on the sphere or wheel. Circular objects also reduce friction. They reduce friction more since there is less surface that is coming in contact. Ball bearings are an example of rolling friction, which can be used to reduce the friction in design. We decided to use ball bearings as a substitute for regular metal washers, and we placed them at the ends of our front axle. There are also ways we can reduce friction. For example, minimizing the amount of surface area that is in contact. You can also add a lubricant to fill in the peaks and valleys which is why we polished our axles in toothpaste and oil. Toothpaste polishing allows the axle to be shiny and spin fast. Oil allows the axle to also be shiny, shiny and slippery as well, so that, the, so that it will spin for a longer time. This is also the reason our design includes three CDs, two at the back and one at the front. The CD at the back is a large record with a diameter of 30.5 centimeters, since CDs have the least surface area which come in contact with the ground when driving. Less surface area contact is always good when trying to prevent friction. Initially, we decided on adding extra brass tubing on the inner axle. However, we substituted this method for putting ball bearings on the ends of the axle where the axles meet the wood. For putting ball bearings on the ends of the axle where the axle meets the wood, we found that ball bearings work better and travel a further distance, although we still decided on polishing the axles with toothpaste and oil to fill in the peaks and valleys. Another key element to gaining distance during the race is a lightweight structure, which is the reason why we incorporated certain materials. For example, we included balsa wood, which is one of the lightest woods in the world. The reason behind this being is because of its large but thin cell walls that opened up to as little space as possible. We decided to have two regular CDs and one record as our wheels because this made the mechanical advantage larger. When trying to gain distance, the mechanical advantage should always be larger than one since the output wheel should, should will spin slow but have more torque to push the car further. Even though we did change many aspects of, of the design while rethinking, we decided to keep most of the frame. But in order to keep a balanced center of gravity, we decided to have the, the part of the frame which holds the record be on an inclined plane, while the two CDs are parallel. This makes the overall structure sturdy and at the same time lightweight. A lightweight design is, is important since there is less gravity pulling down on the structure, which increases the mechanical advantage. We have two main parts of our structure, the front half and the back half. The front half consists of basically just the two long pieces of balsa wood that are on either side of the front axle. The back half consists of only the platform with the mousetrap on it and the axle, which holds and spins the, the one record wheel. There are also many stabilizer pieces throughout the insides of our frame to ensure balance and stability. Other features of our lightweight structure include two 12 cm in diameter CDs, which are placed at the front in addition to one record CD that is placed in the back. 
The two CDs are very thin, not at all heavy and smooth when in contact with another surface. The record wheel gives the car amazing torque, which helps throughout the race. Our original plan of the design for the race car changed as we began to take into account the features which could possibly make our car more efficient in terms of increasing distance. The biggest change we made to the original design is the number of CDs we put. After thinking about the design and how we could possibly make it more powerful, we decided to change the number of CDs from 4 to 3. The front of the new design was the same as our current design, although the back had two more regular sized CDs. We tried this method, but it did not go as planned since we wanted our structure to be able to go a far distance. Initially, when we started using the record, we couldn't find a way to balance out the front and the back. So we added stabilizers and consider the center of gravity in our car and how we could use it to keep the car balanced. We also wanted to put metal washers on all the four edges of our car, but we decided to put this only on the two sides of the back wheel. Instead, for our driver wheel, we put the front two we put two ball bearings at the sides, which enhance the distance for our car and at the same time reduce friction. Both the axles are polished with toothpaste and oil as mentioned before. We believe that this will make our Axle spin longer and keep our wheels from stopping early. The simple machines we put into the construction of our car are wheels, axles, levers, and an inclined plane. The wheels consist of, as mentioned before, the two CDs at the front and one larger CD at the back. The axles are on both ends of the car, which help to spin the wheels and sync with one another. As mentioned before, our axles are covered in lubricants, which fill in the peaks and valleys that we found out would allow the axle to spin for a longer period of time. The axles are attached to the mousetrap with a string, which powers it to move. We added an inclined plane in our frame, and this helps to have a balanced center of gravity. Having a balanced center of gravity is important, especially when having unbalanced sides. Last but not least, our lever is made out of brass tubing and is the reason our car gets its in initial push. This lever is almost the size of our entire frame. It is connected to the mousetrap, which powers the car. Our lever is an example of a second class lever since the output force is in between the fulcrum and the input force. Second class levers don't change the direction of force and are always built for power, meaning that the effort arm is longer than the, than the resistance arm. However, in order for the mousetrap to move, the lever is attached to a string with the help of a zip key that helps to keep it in place. The lever gives the car a good boost before letting it go off on its own. Mechanical advantage is the ability of a machine times the force required. If the mechanical advantage of a machine is more than one, there is an advance in power, meaning that it will take a small force to lift a large load. However, if mechanical advantage is less than one, there is a lesser advantage in force and power. This means that there is more force needed to lift a small load, although it will have velocity and distance. Mechanical advantage of wheels and axles equal input radius divided by the output radius. If mechanical advantage for wheels and axles are less than one, the output wheel has less torque and will spin fast. If mechanical advantage of the wheels and axles are more than one, the output wheel has more torque but will spin slower. Therefore, since we are building the mousetrap car for distance, we want the mechanical advantage to equal higher than one. Every single component of our car took lots of work and very steady hands to create, and we are proud of our finished product. See you next time on Pink's All Out.